I'm just going to let uh, all our participants enter the room before we begin. Okay, as, as people um, join us today, I'm just going to welcome you to our CSDS seminar. Uh, my name is Craig Larkin. I'm a senior lecturer in Middle East politics and the director of the Center for the Study of Divided Societies here in War Studies at King's College in London. And today, our guest lecture is entitled Shattered by Terror, Rebuilding Social Confidence in Post-ISIS Mosul. And we're delighted to have with us Omar Mohammed, and perhaps better known as Mosul I. Omar Mohammed is a historian from Mosul, known recently as the anonymous blogger Mosul I. Um, and through this platform, Omar set out to inform the world about life under ISIS within Mosul. For three years within Mosul, Omar risked his life to bear witness and document ISIS atrocities and destruction, but also episodes of local resistance to ISIS rule. His dispatches and tweets were read by hundreds of thousands of people, providing a window into this distorted dystopian world of ISIS and the so-called Islamic uh, Caliphate. Omar is currently teaching uh, Middle East history and cultural heritage at San Paul University. His focus has also shifted to advocacy, social initiatives for the people of Mosul, including the international effort to resupply the central library of the University of Mosul. As a historian and lecturer at the University of Mosul, his work and scholarly work focuses on history and looking at, looking at local historiographies, narratives, and micro histories. Omar is a regular media commentator on Iraq. He has an MA in Middle East history from the University of Mosul. He was named the 2013 Research of the Year by Iraq's Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. And personally, it's a real privilege and honor to have Omar here to speak today. I just want to thank him for his work, his courage, and his impact, his willingness to bear witness in such challenging and horrific circumstances, but also his desire to see change and to be part of this peace building process in Mosul and Iraq. So, without Further ado, I'm going to hand over uh, to Omar, who's going to speak to us for around 30 minutes, and then we will have a, a Q&A time. So please, if you've got any questions, put it uh, in the Q&A box, and we will be able to, to field those questions after Omar's talk. So thank you, Omar. Thank you, Craig, for inviting me, and many thanks to all the uh, attendees. We have probably... Uh, discussed the question of the fall of Mosul many times, but uh, uh, there is always an important uh, element that we have to keep the discussion about what happened in Mosul. We have always to uh, continue the discussions because every time we get into uh, uh, debates, we will discover new elements of how we and how we want to heal the community that was actually destroyed by Daesh and to, to, to see the uh, uh, deep uh, destruction that Daesh uh, caused in Mosul. But before I start speaking about how we will build this uh, 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 communal confidence, I would like to explain how this destruction happened and whether it happened in 2014 or before that. Uh, the fact that uh, um, there are many researchers who tend to uh, uh, attribute the destruction of the social confidence in Mosul to the uh, 2014 moment in the history of Mosul, which is the moment of Daesh. But in fact, 
the destruction happened slowly long before that and i would start even before the 2003 invasion it's uh, a long uh, uh, and systematic uh, destruction uh, uh, kind of uh, creating the distrust between communities since the regime of saddam and the regime of saddam uh, manipulated the social life of the people and played on different uh, layers of the history of uh, uh, the city of Mosul and also by creating uh, 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 differences between the communities, uh, empowering the rule of uh, 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 tribes over the urban life, redefining the meaning of urbanism, urban uh, structure and the rural areas, uh, 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 playing with the education and uh, creating uh, uh, this kind of distrust among communities. It continued, it didn't happen at once, it continued, it was uh, deepening inside the societies, the people started losing the trust among themselves. Of course, there was always a mechanism uh, 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 of producing uh, 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 um, a new ways of living together. And I would refer here to a question that was raised in the 19, 1970s uh, at one of the most important churches in Mosul, Maskanta Church, which is one of the oldest, oldest churches in Mosul. It was a meeting between uh, the uh, Cardinal, the current Cardinal Luis Rafael Sacco and uh, uh, other historians and Muslim scholars. And that question was, how can we live together? And this question was asked in the 70s. It was an attempt to start looking toward the future, to strengthen the uh, 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 social uh, and communal confidence among the communities, to maintain the diversity of Mosul, and to try to heal any kind of, or try to solve any kind of problems that might emerge in the future, because they felt the uh, 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 dramatic change at that time. They felt the negative impact the government of, or the rules of Saddam was having at that time. Unfortunately, that question didn't last long and it wasn't answered because the uh, uh, later on, the, the, the time that came when Saddam changed his mentality from uh, a secular into a religious person when he started his Arabization policy when he started his faith campaign, such kind of questions became dangerous. So the same people who were trying to establish a new understanding or at least continue to uh, uh, ask such questions, they withdraw and the city remained living in this kind of silence and silent aggrievedness. When the Christian or the Muslims or the Yazidis, they started feeling themselves isolated from each other. And wh while you see all the people living together in one city, but the reality that the people were dis disconnected from each other. It also had an impact on the decline of the role of the community leadership. And the community leadership in Mosul had played a very important role in the past, and it was uh, uh, essential to maintain the social uh, uh, contract intact in the city of Mosul. But Saddam and his regime destroyed this kind of trust in the uh, 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 community leadership, and he replaced them with those who were loyal to him, no matter what uh, kind of like, uh, how, how disqualified they were, the uh, uh, only qualifications that, that is required is to be loyal to the regime of Saddam. And this didn't stop after the fall of Saddam in 2003. It actually kept going in uh, post-2003. And those same people who uh, 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 tried to ask that question in, 2000, in the 1970s, in fact, thought that 2003 would be a moment to put that question again on the uh, table. So they tried and they went into more serious discussions and unfortunately the uh, uh, emergence of 
terrorism, the rise of terrorism uh, 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 killed that movement again. And then uh, 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 Mosul went through terrible uh, moments when it moved from justices into violence. And this time, uh, uh, mosques, church, uh, 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 shrines would be targeted by the extremists. Uh, uh, one of the earliest horrible uh, memories that everyone in Mosul still remember is the beheading of uh, the Christian priest in Mosul in 2004 and the distribution of the CD of this beheading. That one was the most shock shocking moment in the history of Mosul, which shocked everyone, but it actually had uh, a fundamental impact on uh, 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 deepening this kind of uh, distrust among communities and the uh, suffering of the Christian and everyone else started growing. Uh, imagine that from 2003 to 2014, more than 2000 priests were killed. And I still remember observing the streets of Mosul before 2003. It's, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to, to be honest, I don't want to remember what happened, but for the sake of letting the world knows what happened, you rarely spend your day in Mosul after 2003 without seeing a corpse of a dead, a beheaded person in the middle of the street. That was the normal day of everyday life in Mosul. And this it created the fear that fed the emergence of terrorism. And uh, uh, it, it, it was the foil of Daesh and Daesh thrived on this fear that everyone was afraid uh, of saying anything or trying to do anything in the city. But then there was another moment that I connected to again, to the uh, moment of the 1970s at the moment of 2003. There was in 2008, 2009, another opportunity and window where the religious leaders as well as the community leaders wanted to reclaim the narrative again. And again, the same person, the same personalities, and I always keep mentioning his name because he was always the one who initiated the uh, 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 question of how can we live together? It's Luis Rafael Sacco. And he asked the same question when Mosul lived in a kind of like short, peaceful period. But then 2011 happened the withdrawal of the US troops from Iraq and the re-emergence of the uh, uh, terrorism and the rise of Daesh. And then came the movement of 2014. And that was the uh, 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 last step in the uh, 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 politics of fear that Daesh practiced in Mosul. 2014 was the moment when they implemented their full strategy of destroying and shattering the communities of Mosul by deporting the Christians, by committing a genocide against the Yazidis, a genocide against the Shia population, another genocide against the Sunni people. They didn't leave anyone. And then they started systematically destroying the most visible elements of the identities of the people, which is the cultural heritage. Uh, they started destroying the ancient uh, 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 history, then the uh, Christian uh, history, the Islamic history, the Yazidi history. They came to Mosul not only with weapons, they came with a full package of history to replace the history of the people of Mosul and to change the social structure of the city with the system that they brought. So instead of having uh, equal citizenship uh, before the law, Daesh provided something new, which is 
if you are a member of the organization, then you are privileged. If you are a supporter of the organization, you are privileged. If you are not part of the uh, 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 this terrorist organization, then you are out of the social class that Daesh provided. They call it Amma or the commoners, and everyone among those commoners is suspected by Daesh as a potential enemy of uh, uh, Islamic State. And uh, uh, they also created their own structures of what they call the Muhajirun, the uh, uh, foreign fighters, the Ansar, the supporters, and they played uh, a dangerous game with the uh, tribes. And uh, here I have to be honest when I discuss this because it is something that Daesh succeeded in, in achieving while the uh, 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 several governments uh, weren't able to solve this problem. And the question of the tribes is still actually uh, a big question in Iraq. When Daesh uh, wanted to uh, uh, control the tribes, what they did is simply they returned back their villages that they were confiscated as part of the post-2003 conflict that happened. The, the conflict between Arabs and Kurds or Turkmen and Arabs, uh, Shabak and Arabs, etc. Daesh gave those tribes their villages and in exchange they uh, were loyal to Daesh. Whether they joined them or not, they uh, managed to uh, uh, gain uh, control and authority over these tribes or at least to keep these tribes on uh, 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 their side without having them fighting against Daesh. And they also changed the structure of even the geographical uh, 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 space of the city of Mosul by redesigning or redrawing the borders of Mosul. Now it's no more the same Mosul that the people uh, used to live. It's, it's not part of the same uh, 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 geographical borders. No, it's part of the uh, what they call Wilaya system. Mosul is no more the same uh, uh, city. It is. It belongs to another Wilaya. The southern part of Mosul belongs to another Wilaya. And all of this confused the people and changed also uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, meaning of what is urban and what is rural. And that created conflict between uh, uh, urban areas and rural areas, which actually led to more conflict. And it even led to develop the structure of Daesh itself, uh, uh, while Daesh kept uh, 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 attacking the civil society to the, to, the, to the extent that we were afraid that the civil society in Mosul might disappear at any moment, even after the fall of Daesh, because the way they attacked the civil society was horrible. And with all of these kind of, uh, 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 with, with all of this destruction that took place in Mosul, you can see, Greg, as many other observers, that it's not only the, in, the, the communities that lost the trust in each other, it's, individuals who have lost trust in each other. So it goes from the individual to the community. And when you speak about coexistence, when you speak about uh, reconciliation, when you speak about let's sit together, when you bring back the same question of how we can live together, you feel yourself a stranger because no one would understand this. When you ask the question, let us uh, 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 go for a reconciliation. They tell you reconciliation of what? My whole land was destroyed. My whole communities were shattered and deported. Uh, the Yazidis, the same. There was a genocide committed against them. And when you speak to the Sunni people, the same thousands of Sunnis were uh, uh, um, in fact executed by Daesh. So the question remains, how can, we, how can we address these issues with a way of telling everyone of these communities that your question matter, but not at the cost of the 
question of the other community. When we speak about the Yazidi genocide, we, we don't want to we, we don't want to create this kind of uh, uh, types of victims. No, whoever uh, uh, was attacked by Daesh is a victim of Daesh. I cannot say that uh, the Christian question matters more than the Yazidi question. We need to deal with all of this as a whole because Daesh committed crimes against humanity and uh, everyone uh, in Mosul uh, is part of this humanity who suffered from these the crimes of Daesh. And I would like here to also address something very important, Craig, and it's one of the problems why we are unable to actually uh, effectively achieve at least first steps of real reconciliation in Mosul, is that we are still using uh, uh, ineffective uh, terminologies. I cannot keep I cannot implement, I am here referring, for example, to the United Nations. I cannot implement the United Nations strategy that was uh, 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 implemented in Rwanda. I cannot implement it in, in, in Mosul. It's completely different context. It's not the same historical uh, 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 structure, not the same so social structure. What we need is to develop our understanding, to create new questions, and to see how deep the problem goes into the history of Mosul and where we can actually address the real problem because the real consequences of Daesh are no more just the religious ones. We are speaking now about the impact of the climate change on, 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 on the Christians themselves. And I would explain this with more details. Uh, the Christians who are living in the Nineveh plains are still suffering from the fear and the risk of losing their lands because now it's not just Daesh, it's the militias who are offering lands for those who are coming from southern Iraq and those who are coming from southern Iraq, they are leaving their lands because it's no more a livable area. It's suffering from the climate change. So they are moving north and in exchange for having the farms, for having the lands, the militias are gaining more uh, loyalty, loyalty from those people at the expense of the uh, Christians. Imagine that uh, whole villages were uh, 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 distributed, like you have a land of two or three miles, it will be uh, uh, cut into pieces and distributed to those new comers who are running from also the consequences of the uh, climate change. What I'm trying to say here, Craig, is that it is getting more complicated and we cannot just keep discussing the uh, consequences of Daesh as just a religious uh, uh, problem. It goes beyond this. And as I said before, the economy is at the heart of the uh, 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 rebuilding the confidence uh, uh, in Mosul because the city of Mosul is a commercial city. It's a city that lives and thrives on the economical prosperity. When you look at the urban structure of Mosul, you would see the Jewish neighborhood, the Christian neighborhood, the Muslim neighborhood. But where do all of these people meet and have the real diversity? It's in the old markets. And that's why the first thing that actually uh, uh, recovered in Mosul was the old market of the city and it's still recovering because it's helping the people to reclaim their historical identity, cultural identity, but most importantly, the uh, 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 peace that they are trying to achieve, which needs more efforts. And the moment you can offer the Christian, for example, the stability and the returning of their shops in the old market of Mosul, they will not need this kind of conversations of let's speak about uh, 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 reconciliation because the reconciliation is an outcome of a sustainable uh, plan of uh, 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 economical prosperity. When you provide them back with their normal lives, with what they really need, this will help them to continue. And I always mention this example of 
a Yazidi man sitting in uh, uh, at the top of uh, Mount Sinjar in 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 Sinjar. He produced a dried figs, olive oil, uh, tahini, or whatever kind of productions he uh, produced. He needs a market. What is his usual market? His usual market is the old market in Mosul. So how do you how do you make him uh, communicate with people of different faiths, different backgrounds? Is his journey from Sinjar to Mosul is the process of the reconciliation. When he feel that it's safe to sell his products again in Mosul, in the old market of Mosul. That is the natural and normal uh, process of reconciliation. I cannot impose it on them. It has to happen naturally by providing all the uh, 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 um, elements and by, by creating the environment for such kind of communication to happen. Still, there is another element that is very important and essential, and it should be actually uh, uh, intensively used. Mosul, especially the old part of the city, is still under reconstruction. And this reconstruction of the old houses, they need a, a certain kind of uh, 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 construction materials. Those construction materials, such as the marble, for example, it comes also from Sinjar. And then you need the gypsum that comes from uh, 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 Nineveh plains and, and eastern part of, of, of Mosul. If you can create this kind of economical connections again uh, between the people, and all of them would contribute in the reconstruction of Mosul, that's how I call it the real reconstru reconstruction of the communal and social confidence. Otherwise, if we try to impose, if we try to discuss only the problem without looking into the solutions and also to ask different questions, we will not be able, in fact, to uh, uh, go into a, a, a real debate. What we need is more debate. What we need is more uh, visible uh, 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 reconstruction that helps the people to come back to life, uh, uh, also helping the people to trust not only in the social life, but helping the communities to rebuild the trust not only among themselves, but also between the communities and the uh, 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 local governments. And this is how, how, with the authorities, this is how you create the confidence. Because after all, what would a citizen need more than uh, safety, security, and a good uh, 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 job. That's that's how you reconstruct a city because the city is not uh, 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 just a group of people. It's a complicated uh, combination of elements: economical, religious, social, and historical. Thank you. Sorry, my just let me open the door for my job. She is upset. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Omar, for um, an excellent presentation. Uh, we have a number of questions coming in, so please feel free. If you have questions that you would like to, to ask Omar, just pop it in the Q&A and I will run through them. But I just, I just want to start with a couple because, I mean, there's just so many, there's so many issues that, uh, and so many questions that come to mind. and. Yeah, I'd like you maybe to comment on it. And I was curious whenever you mentioned the idea of the challenge of collective suffering and individual suffering and whether, I mean, there's a, there's a push towards even the use of the term genocide and whether it should be used for one community and not another or how we should memorialize the death of those that have been killed. You know, should there be collective memorialization or in what way should it be individualized? Should there be particular museums for perhaps the Yazidis, for Christians, for, for other communities? And I just wonder, what's your thinking on that? Because I think the memory and the sort of reconstruction goes hand in hand. As you're rebuilding, the question is, what are we actually rebuilding? How do you memorialize the dead in a way that honors them? but also allows for a future vision of the city. So 
Yes, um, this this is a very a very important and sensitive question, uh, Craig. But before we answer these questions, we need to define the crimes of Daesh. The way you define the crimes of Daesh will help us to easily understand the importance of recognizing a genocide against certain community rather than another community. I have to be uh, 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 careful here, but it's important to say it. When you recognize a genocide against a certain community and you don't recognize or you don't uh, say that another community suffered from a genocide, this might create some kind of also problems. But there is always a way of using this for the greater good, which is the crimes of Daesh should always be defined as a crimes against humanity. And we start from here. And then we go, we say, yes, Daesh committed the crimes against all the people, but let's look at the uh, 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 structure or the systematic destruction and systematic attacks that Daesh committed against the Yazidis, which no one can actually question or uh, 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 debate because it's a fact. They committed and and just I think yesterday, uh, uh, Karim Khan, the, the the special advisor of UNITAD. Uh, explain that there are enough evidence to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, there are enough evidence of, uh, 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 to, talk, to, to recognize what happened to the SDs as genocide. But at the same time, we have the Christian are calling for the same. They also want to be, what happened to them to be recognized as a genocide. Now, the problem is, can we depoliticize this? And can we speak to the communities in one manner? Like, as I said, like we speak to all of them, to all of these people, what happened to you is a crime against humanity. But then again, we have to go back to the level of the destruction that happened. But I am afraid that this question will remain open for a very long time, that certain communities will feel themselves like, why my suffering was less important than the others. It will always remain there, but the most important thing that, as you said, it's also a museum is, I support to, to build a museum to recognize all the victims, but it's also in reality, it might also be a dangerous thing to do in the meantime. We just need to give more time until we, uh, 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 create such kind of a museum. But one of the important things, and I urge here all the organizations that are working on investigating the crimes, especially UNITAD and the International Coalition, and I have asked this before, we need to make sure that we make public spaces with all the names of the people who were killed by Daesh. Like, it's not a big thing to do. It's easy. You have panels and, and, and murals that contains the names of all the victims of Daesh. So, so as you said, Craig, we go to the uh, individual level that everyone's suffering is recognized. This might also help to uh, show that everyone actually uh, 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 matter. Everyone is important. Every life uh, is important. Great, thank you. Um, we have a number of questions, so I, I'm just going to, to run through a, a, a couple of them. And Jennifer Young has a few questions and, and she asks, does vengeance and retribution feature on this path towards healing in a fractured society? I think it's an, an interesting question when we talk about the tribes, we talk and we think, we think about internal, uh, like sulha, um, ceremonies or practices you know what role does does retribution or some sort of peace building that, you know? that depends that depends on you know the problem the problem that started uh, uh, about the 
the ISIS affiliated uh, families or ISIS perceived families, many families uh, 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 were deported from their homes just because one of their, uh, a member of their family joined Daesh and all the family was punished. That actually happened because uh, um, because there was no plan how to deal with the post Daesh question. And when you leave it to the tribal system, you will get nothing but this kind of uh, 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 revenge. And many, 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 many crimes happened and committed against them. Also, the question of the families who want to return back to Iraq, but they are stuck in a whole camp or they are stuck on the borders. It's still a question of how you convince the community to accept them back. And this question is not with the community anymore. It's with the community leadership. That's why we always need to invest in developing the community and the religious leadership. Now, I am aware that uh, 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 religious leaders such as Luis Rafael Sacco, Sistani, uh, 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 the Yazidi leadership, and also the Sunni leadership, they are all ready to, uh, 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 to establish certain kind of uh, uh, an announcement or a statement to give mercy or to say that those families are not to be punished for the crimes that they were committed by uh, 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 the members who, who, who joined Daesh. Uh, it's also important to support the, the uh, uh, justice system. And uh, we, would, we would love to see more visibility of the work UNITAD is doing because that would give more confidence to the people that the justice system is working but the most important thing Craig, which i don't know why it's still uh, 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 not happening and i've called for this many times we need a nuremberg movement in iraq a public trial should be happening in iraq and it should happen today not tomorrow we cannot wait anymore for this a public trial to bring the criminals of Daesh to justice and to show the people, the victims, their families, that there is justice and that there is system that can bring justice to those uh, uh, victims and to uh, uh, put those uh, criminals uh, behind the bars. Now that's, that's, that's a political decision has to be made by the Iraqi government. I know that there is a will to do this but I still don't understand why it didn't happen so far. There are enough evidence of these crimes, and especially after the recognition of the genocide against the Yazidis, it's now more than ever, the Nuremberg movement should happen in, happen in Iraq. I think with this first step of, of, of public a tribunal, a public trial, everyone should see it with more investment in the leadership, I think it will lead to uh, reconciliation among communities because once you feel that uh, uh, justice is served, I believe that uh, uh, people will cool down a little bit. Do, I mean, do you think this can happen realistically internally, or it would need an international uh, criminal I believe, court? I believe. I believe it can. It can. It can be. It can be uh, uh, um, both. I mean. Uh, uh, of course, of course, the, the, the mandate of UNITAD is very important, but it's also important to have uh, 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 this kind of, of uh, 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 court to be established in Iraq, uh, to have its sessions in Sinjar, in Nineveh Plains, in Mosul, in other places where the crimes were committed. I believe that this is a very important way of showing the victims and their families that justice is being served. Yeah. Maybe along those lines, uh, I have a question from uh, Makita and she says, is there much research that's been done on how the legal environment pre, during or post conflict affects reconciliation process? So maybe the issue might be, you know, we could call for an international court, but if there is, you know, if law and order has not really been fully established within the state, you know, how can we expect reconciliation 
processes to begin? I'm afraid there is there is less efforts on this aspect. I'm afraid that there is very little being done about this. Uh, it's still I, I am aware of 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 some uh, 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 steps were taken, but they are still very small. We are speaking here about a full uh, time uh, 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 efforts and research need to be, be done to establish the facts, to establish the uh, 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 situation of uh, 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 some of problems that predates Daesh itself, because it's well connected. As as I explained when I spoke about the uh, 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 villages that they were giving back to the tribes, it predates Daesh. It goes back to the Saddam period, to the, to the uh, uh, Arabization uh, uh, policy of Saddam. So the problems are very complicated and they need to be seen not as something just as a consequences of Daesh, but we have to see the problem of, of, of Daesh. It brought all the old the problems all together beside the problems of Daesh and it created all of this kind of chaos. But uh, 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 more need to be done about this. Yeah. Great. Uh, I have a question from uh, Francis, and they ask, is Mosul even remotely a priority for the Baghdad government? And should it be so? Uh, and, then, and then secondly, they ask about the position of women who are being held accountable for their husband's involvement or, or being accused of being a member of Daesh. So, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, to start with, I mean, one of, one of the one of the reasons why uh, uh, Daesh happened is because Mosul wasn't a priority for the Iraqi government, and that's that's one of the questions that we still need uh, 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 we still have to discuss. Um, I am afraid that Mosul is still not a priority for uh, the Iraqi government, and uh, uh, if it wasn't for the international support, uh, we wouldn't have seen any uh, uh, effective reconstruction in the city of Mosul. Um, it's also important to give a credit here to the people of Mosul uh, and to praise them for the uh, uh, efforts they have done for reconstructing and restoring their uh, life. There are thousands of youth who are eager to build a better future for, for themselves and for their city. There are many people who are reconstructing their homes, shops, and re-establishing the markets. Uh, uh, the, the international organizations are working on the reconstruction of the cultural heritage, which is fundamental and essential in reconstructing the, the, the confidence, uh, communal confidence. Um, and regarding the second question, I think it was about the uh, 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 women or yeah. wives of the Daesh members. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, uh, problem is very deep now. It's 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 more problematic than it was two years ago. Uh, everyone who joined Daesh, his whole family is being punished. Their house is being confiscated. They are deported from their areas and. Uh, uh, um, it, there is no clear plan of how to deal with this. And, uh, and I connect this back to what I said, we need to invest more in, 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 in community leadership in order to create uh, social confidence among the uh, communities, uh, but also to strengthen that uh, the, the, the judicial and the justice system should be respected when we deal with this, we cannot punish people who committed nothing, and we cannot punish anyone for crimes that were committed by others. Uh, uh, um, but the question is, and it's a very, a very, a very tricky question about women of Daesh. We have to distinguish between women who found themselves uh, uh, all of a sudden their husbands are member of Daesh. They, they didn't know about this. And uh, as a woman, she cannot uh, uh, resist this or she cannot uh, 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 um, say no to that, to that person. And we have to distinguish between those people who are innocent and those who willingly join Daesh, whether they are women or men. 
That's that's uh, why we need to go through legal system. We need to go through uh, 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 investigation to determine who was Daesh and who was not. It's not just a perceived affiliation, just because the family, one of its member had Daesh, the whole family is Daesh. But there are women, in fact, who joined Daesh willingly. And not, this this not to be, to be confused, and we don't, don't have, we, we, we shouldn't actually punish other women just because other women join Daesh. Then we see like all, all these uh, uh, females are also Daesh members. Yeah. Great. Um, there's, there's a question by uh, Salma and they ask, what are some of the local initiatives that are dealing with social healing, perhaps that you've seen that are successful, maybe in small projects or micro enterprises can you give us an example perhaps yes, so there are many there are many 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 examples and i will give you only some uh, and i will ask you uh, uh, to uh, go and take a look just type on the uh, uh, google and say social initiatives in mosul and you will see yourself but i will give you some real examples and it is it is one of the most beautiful examples during the recent visit of Pope Francis to Mosul on 7th of March 2000, uh, 2021, the, the last March, everyone was surprised that a beautiful cross with all the elements of the diversity of Mosul being uh, displayed on that cross was created by a young Muslim person who created this uh, cross and gave it as a gift to the Pope and as a gift to the Christians. And also the statement that the uh, director of the Christian properties in Mosul, uh, uh, priest, uh, 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 Father Raid, who said, I am a Christian who lives among two million Muslims and all of them calls me Abuna. Abuna means father in, 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 in Arabic. That he is explaining how possible it is to re-establish the confidence and the peace. There are many other initiatives of uh, uh, inviting the priest to a Nuri mosque or vice versa, uh, religious leaders from Muslim community to uh, the uh, 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 churches. There were many uh, youth initiatives of people meeting each other from different cities, from different faiths, from different sects, uh, uh, having discussions among themselves. It's all community-based and grassroots uh, uh, initiatives. You could see uh, uh, young people uh, cleaning and reconstructing a church and young Christian people uh, 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 rehabilitating a mosque. I believe that these are the initiatives that we need to look at to uh, 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 develop and to invest in. Uh, there are also many other initiatives such as the uh, 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 rule the music and 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 art uh, 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 initiatives are playing in re-enhancing the uh, 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 narrative of uh, uh, Mosul as a city of diversity. Yes, I think there are many. Also, the rule. I think there are also questions connected to women. I will I will answer them within this question which is now the women are having more role in the recovery of Mosul. And this is also very important uh, uh, to, to, to note here that we are not only getting a recovery from Daesh, but we are in fact redefining uh, the role of women that wasn't uh, uh, defined long time ago it's, ta it's the time now to redefine this rule and to give the space to women in Mosul, which is actually being reclaimed by the women themselves. And they enforced their space in the city of Mosul. And they say, we have to play a role in the future of Mosul. And then they did. They are having a role in the future of Mosul. Mm. Yeah, no, th yeah, that's a really interesting answer. I I'm always curious because I've sort of followed the, the revive muscle uh, tagline and hashtag. Yes. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, how much are we talking about a revival or a nostalgic return to the past or whether we're, whether what we're witnessing is 
initiatives for a change. I mean, we're not just looking to to recapture what was there, but a, a transformation of muscle society. Uh, I, I believe I believe Greg that we are uh, in the process of reviving the spirit of Mosul, not just uh, a nostalgic approach to the past. Uh, what I see here is there is something important happening in Mosul is that the young generation has more courage to use critical thinking than the uh, uh, past generation. I mean, I'm still young. I, I think I'm still young. I'm not very old. But even in my time uh, as an adult in Mosul, I wouldn't dare to ask such kind of questions. I'm speaking here on, on historical level, religious level, social level, and many other uh, 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 layers. The young generation is redefining the future of the city and trying to, uh, trying to establish a social contract that can actually contain everyone, that can accept everyone. But we have to also be realistic. Such change and such establishment of uh, 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 social change, it doesn't happen in one day. It requires time and we have to give enough time to this. But what I see, and as a historian, I shouldn't be optimistic. But as a citizen of Mosul, I really feel optimistic about the future of the city when I see those young people thirsty to a better future, mm -hmm. that they are actually opening in new spaces in the city that I never imagined to see them happening in Mosul. Uh, the, the, the women entrepreneurs, the uh, uh, women-led enterprises, the women-led initiatives, the women-led uh, 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 theater, the women-led uh, uh, music uh, displays, and, and also the uh, 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 art and the other kind of initiatives. We, we are witnessing the, uh, uh, we, we, we are actually witnessing now that there are more women in very important positions in the university, for example. We didn't see this before. The head of the international relations of Muslim University is a woman. It was always held by a man since the establishment of Mosul University, but it's changing now. There are more women entering the, the, the public space, but there are challenges. And one of the main uh, uh, and the biggest challenges is the security. If we cannot maintain the security of the city, uh, such initiatives might die and disappear. So it's, it's a fight on different fronts, but the good thing is that it's happening. The change is happening. Great. It's encouraging to hear uh, someone who's witnessed such horrors, to, you know, to still be optimistic about your city's future and to see, you know, from those, you know, the ashes and, and horror that there can, you know, some good can actually be redeemed from it. On the question of security, uh, Francis argues uh, or, or asks, while ISIS you know, have put aside territorial ambitions in Iraq and Syria, but are perhaps slowly regenerating in the Nineveh Plains. What's your sort of diagnosis on, on ISIS and its ability to capitalize on ungoverned spaces? You know, we, we've seen it perhaps in Syria, Syria particularly, that there is a, a revival in, in some of those spaces that, that have, you know, where there's a vacuum. Do yes, that's... that's uh... That's another big challenge, Craig, and um, uh, uh, specifically what uh, Francis is, 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 is explaining, it's unfortunately happening, especially in areas that overlaps with uh, militia controlled uh, uh, areas in the western part of, of, of Nineveh on the Iraq-Syrian borders, um, in the tribal areas. Uh, and not only this, is my concern. My concern is there are grievances and such grievances haven't been addressed yet. And those grievances, especially the consequences of the destruction of Mosul is what Daesh is 
using to rebuild its narrative again, which is a very dangerous approach that Daesh is using now. Uh, the unsolved problems of the, as we mentioned, the Daesh uh, families, the unsolved problems of the people who disappeared, uh, no one knows where, are, where they are uh, imprisoned, and many other questions of people who lost everything. Um, the children who are growing uh, uh, in, in, in terrible situations, in terrible conditions, all of these are making a perfect formula for Daesh to regenerate itself. But we also need to be uh, uh, realistic here to answer the question of whether Daesh will have the capacity or capability of having the same power that it did before 2014, the answer is no. They cannot, but they can make enough uh, uh, troubles to disturb the security in the city, which is also a very concerning thing, but they cannot regenerate again. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a good answer. Uh, we have a question from Maya, a couple of, of questions, and sure. she's interested in, as you've collected all of this data and material, do you think there's the need to, to, to create a sort of documentary or there should be some type of educational approach to inform people? Absolutely, of? absolutely. That's, that's, that's a fundamental thing in the uh, process of, of, re, uh, 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 of, of, of rebuilding the confidence is we have to make it clear that those victims are not only numbers and statics. They have names. Therefore, I suggested that, and I invite everyone who was interested among the international community and the uh, uh, United Nations, we need to build a memorial that contains all the names of the victims who were killed by Daesh and to display them publicly so those people will not actually be transformed into numbers, but their names to be remembered. And yes, it's very important to keep that and we have to protect, as I, as I said before, we have to keep everything and every single paper, every single uh, memory in order to show them. I, I am with the idea of forgiving, but I believe that it's very dangerous to forget. We cannot forget because we need to remind the next generation of what happened so we can at least understand what happened to prevent it from happening again. There's, there's another couple, couple of questions. And again, it's, it's really to do with reintegration questions. And an anonymous attendee asks, is it realistic to imagine that all of the former religious communities could actually return or, uh, and Leslie also argues, it, it, are there certain parts of Mosul that has been totally destroyed where certain cultural heritage from particular groups uh, no longer exists and, and can, that re, can that be rebuilt? Um, the, the amount of destruction in uh, 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 the old city of Mosul is um, about 80%. Uh, uh, according to the estimation by the uh, 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 UN Habitat and many other organizations, uh, this is this is related to the to the uh, uh, cultural heritage and historical sites. Uh, not to mention that a huge destruction actually of the uh, uh, houses and the uh, other kind of infrastructure. But all of this can be rebuilt. Uh, there are many buildings that are still intact but they require immediate uh, action. Uh, it's very important to uh, 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 move quicker and faster in the recovery, especially the houses. Uh, I believe there are some projects now working on rehabilitating the houses of the people, which is helping people to return, but we are still speaking about other areas within Old Mosul that are completely demolished and they were unfortunately demolished after the destruction of Mosul happened and after the end of the battle by the uh, uh, notorious uh, uh, 
uh, governor of Mosul uh, uh, who destroyed an area of size of the 18 football uh, 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 fields in size, which is the oldest part of Mosul. He was planning to build uh, 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 new new buildings uh, and to invest there. He, he, he uh, took down and demolished to the ground all that uh, important uh, historical area. Uh, it's a very difficult task. It's also a question when you speak to the people the, about the importance of cultural heritage comparing to houses, the people would ask you like, my house is more important than the mosque or the church or the historical site. It's true, but we shouldn't only uh, 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 deal with it just as one element because the historical site is connected to that house. It's connected to the identity of the people. We have to move alongside, we have to move, the, move uh, uh, them together alongside and rehabilitate them together because when you rehabilitate the cultural identity and stabilize it, the people will live in peace. But when they feel that their cultural identity is not represented, it will create problems. Do you, do you think there's a danger? I mean, I've seen it in the Middle East where there can be a focus on, on restoration of holy spaces and shrines, but if the communities are no longer there, it just becomes a, a museum to the idea of religious diversity rather than the practice. That's, that's, that's what was uh, uh, being, uh, uh, that's, that's what some people were trying to do regarding the Jewish cultural heritage, which I uh, strongly stood against. I am against the museumization of communities and their heritage. They were trying to rehabilitate the Jewish heritage, but where are the Jews? And uh, that's the question that I am asking. Where are the Jews? What's the meaning of reconstructing the Jewish synagogue without having the Jews? Before we build the structure itself, we have to tell the full story of what happened and we have to speak about the people more than the site itself. I believe uh, 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 there is an opportunity that Mosul can convince its Christian to return back and that, that the reconstruction of the uh, 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 holy sites of Christian in Mosul, especially the very ancient churches who are, that are under reconstruction, it will help the Christian to return. I have seen this kind of spirit among the Christian leadership, uh, 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 the Archbishop of Mosul, Najib Mikhail, uh, the uh, uh, representative of the Dominicans, Olivier, Father Olivier, uh, 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 Cardinal Luis Rafael Sacco, they are all optimistic about this idea of recreating or reestablishing the uh, space of the Christian to help them to return, uh, but also not just the, you see, Craig, not just the holy sites. If, if you cannot provide them back with their houses and the shops, the, those sites will have no meaning. Therefore, it's important to deal with it as a full package, not separated. You know, I, to I totally agree. Uh, just a, a final question. Uh, two questions perhaps one from uh, Bilal who says in Rwanda and South Africa there was a monitoring and evaluation tool the reconciliation barometer to keep track of progress on some of these processes is there anything similar in the case of Mosul um, I'm afraid not and that's that's one of the questions that we need to address it's actually not uh, the same case i mean there are initiatives or reconcil of reconciliation but we haven't seen real progress in them and or if there is a progress we haven't seen uh, uh, results or we don't know how it's 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 moving yeah uh, and leslie leslie argues again on sort of cultural heritage restoration have unesco been involved in assisting the rebuilding and were there enough sufficient detailed plans of houses or cultural artifacts that they can actually be restored faithfully? 
and is there enough finance for this? Yes. Um, uh, in fact, UNESCO is involved through the Revive the Spirit of Mosul in different projects. Uh, uh, the projects that are dealing with the uh, uh, historical sites, especially the Anuri Mosque, uh, which uh, 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 its design has been announced recently. Uh, the at tahira Church, the uh, Catholic Syriac Church of, of Mosul, uh, Asa'a Church, as well as Agawat Mosque, which is one of the oldest mosques in Mosul. Beside that, the UNESCO is working on a big project of reconstruction of houses in old Mosul to help the people return. Uh, the problem of uh, 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 such kind of, as you say, Leslie, uh, the wholesale rebuilding requires uh, finance. Uh, 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 there, is, there is a lack of, of, of financial support for such kind of projects and UNESCO is limited with resources. Uh, it's, it's a very important uh, idea here to address is that to, and I have called for this before, is I know that organization cannot easily work together, but it's the time to, to have this kind of like alliance of coalition, just like the military coalition against Daesh, we need a coalition of organizations to work on more reconstruction in Mosul. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's that's great. I think we've we've basically run through most of our our questions. So yeah, thank you for an My excellent pleasure. excellent presentation. There's so many, so much more I'd like to to talk to you about. But uh, thank you for yeah just sharing with us your experience and what you're currently in, involved in. Thank you, Craig, for, for inviting me and uh, many thanks to all the people who attended and those who asked the questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe, all of you. Okay. Bye. Bye.